What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a very interesting Liverpool transfer news video and since Virgil van Dijk got injured, Liverpool have been linked to a whole host of centre-backs and I think this latest transfer link is very interesting because we are linked to a free agent who was an Argentina international footballer and he played for four seasons in a row for Valencia in La Liga and he's a very very experienced player who is now a free agent which means that Liverpool can sign him right now even in the middle of the season without the transfer window because he's a free agent we can sign him and register him he's 34 years old and he played actually 23 games for Valencia last season he was released in the summer and he hasn't found a club yet so this could be like an emergency short-term transfer just to have him on the bench basically to have another option I mean if uh, Gomez or Matip are available are unavailable for a longer period of time and uh, do we really want to keep uh, playing Fabinho and Gomez or Fabinho and Matip every three days we might need to bring on or bring in an experienced centre-back like Ezekiel Garay who was at Valencia for an extended period of time just to have a safety net a safe pair of uh, you know center backs because i'm really not comfortable with reese williams billy cometio sep van der merg or nathaniel phillips playing an extended number of premier league games if uh, inevitably sooner or later gomez will get injured matip already has an injury problem he is a doubt for the sheffield united game so we are already very very thin in the center back department so let me know guys would you if you were Jurgen Klopp would you sign Ezekiel Garay I mean he would only cost us a few months of wages basically we could sign him on a short-term contract give him a one-year contract and when we can bring in a transfer in January then maybe we can move on Ezekiel Garay so he, he could only play for like three months for Liverpool just to have a, a safety basically a safety backup center back who is a very very experienced player and we previously made some emergency centre-back signing. Do you, do you remember Stephen Coker, who we signed, I think, from Queen's Park Rangers? He was a, an emergency signing, an experienced centre-back that Jurgen Klopp brought in just to beef up the numbers in the squad. So Ezekiel Garay, in total, played 114 games for Valencia in just four seasons, uh, scoring six goals in the process as well. And before that, he played for Zenit, in St. Petersburg, Lovrens, current club in the Russian Premier League. Before that, he played for Benfica three seasons. And amazingly, in one season, he scored eight goals for Benfica in the Portuguese League. And before that, he was even a player of Real Madrid. He actually played 31 games for Real Madrid in like one and a half seasons. And also, he played for Racing Santander in La Liga so maybe the problem with Garay is not his age but he has never played in the Premier League he doesn't really know English football so I'm not sure how well he would uh, adapt to the league being uh, like 34 years old but he played for Argentina for 32 times and uh, he also won the Copa del Rey with Real Madrid he won the league with Benfica he won the league with uh, Zenit St. Petersburg and he also won the Copa del Rey with Valencia beating Barcelona in the final in the 2018-19 season and also he was part of a great generation of uh, Argentina national team uh, which uh, actually made the 2014 World Cup final he was uh, playing most of that tournament he was a uh, first choice in all the remaining games and uh, he actually converted his penalty in a penalty shootout against the Netherlands in the World Cup semi-final so he played against Germany in the World Cup final which sadly Argentina and Messi lost the World Cup final there but Gara is an experienced player and he would only be a stopgap for like three four months so I don't think there would be a big risk bringing him in and what is very very concerning to me is that jo Joao Matip's injury record so Joao Matip came in for Liverpool five seasons ago he played 
around 30 games in his first three season every season but since then since the start of last season Joao Matip only played 15 games for Liverpool in all competitions which is very very worrying very concerning which means that basically Joao Matip almost never is available for Liverpool to play just 13 games and to play just nine Premier League games last season means that Joao Matip was injured for like 70% of the season and this season when he plays for the first 90 minutes against Everton straight after that we can't play him again he's out injured so that's why I'm saying that basically we have one fit centre-back Joe Gomez and the others are like makeshift centre-backs uh, Fabinho is not really a centre-back and yes Fabinho can play there he has been brilliant against Ajax he can play there for an extended period of time in the Premier League but then we remove Fabinho from midfield and I think at midfield in the midfield Fabinho is the most uh, the most reliable and that's where we get the most out of him so for Matip to be injured all the time it's a really big concern because now Van Dijk will be out for the whole season almost Matip could be out for a lot of games this season so we just have to play Joe Gomez and Fabinho in almost every game. Is that ideal? No, I don't think so. That's why I'm leaning towards Liverpool should bring in Ezekiel Garay. And Neil Meller, a former Liverpool player and now pundit, agrees with me. Say, they say, he said that Liverpool should move to address this centre-back situation in the January transfer window. And we are linked with Koulibaly, we are linked with Brighton's uh, Ben White as well. If Liverpool had signed a top-class defender, Neil Meller said, as a priority in the summer, then one of either Matip or Gomez would have missed out, both of whom have formed an excellent partnership with Van Dijk. Although playing with Van Dijk will always make you a better player, you can't legislate for these injuries. The timing is awful, being only a couple of weeks after the transfer window shot but Liverpool will have to survive until January with what they have and then look to recruit well in January to support that position they still have two recognized centre-halves and the support of Fabinho so they will hope that they can get through the game load until then in terms of who Liverpool should be looking to sign that will be left to those in charge of recruitment but what I would say is that they need to look for someone who can lead from the back and be comfortable on the ball in order to replace Van Dijk's quality is, but there will be a premium to pay for those players well not if we bring in a free agent Isaiah Gorai but also I think Fabinho can be a leader from the back he's pretty vocal and I think he has that in him and Meller also believed that Pickford should have been sent off Pickford's foul on Van Dijk was a huge moment in the game even though it was so early on the frustration with the tackle comes not just from Liverpool fans but football fans in general from VAR which was introduced to actually correct the decision that wasn't given. We have all seen the incident and it took three minutes for the officials to determine that there was no offside. He's marginally offside, last season it might not have been, but it is still a sending off offense. That's where the frustration comes from. Of course the referee might not have been sure with the angle he was standing, but VAR is sure. I've not spoken to anybody who doesn't think it was a red card and that is what VAR is for. Pickford has ended up being Everton's best player, making three or four brilliant, brilliant saves and was the difference as to why Everton got something from the game. So Pickford should have been red carded and in terms of retrospective action I'm not sure of the full ruling behind it as it wa was a dangerous and mistimed challenge whether one game or a free, bang, get, free game ban and then so be it. It wasn't that Pickford was malicious, we will always see these challenges in football, that is the way it is. It's, it is unfortunate for Virgil, but it was a red card offense and would have had a huge impact on the result had Pickford been sent off. That's, that's I think, the, the most uh, disgraceful decision from VAR that I have seen, not to send Pickford off when they pulled, looked at the tackle with multiple angles available and the, for, for the VAR to not even send the referee to, to view the monitor was a scandal as I said I, I never I almost never used uh, those harsh words but in this case I think it was justified and Fabinho gave a very interesting interview to the mirror saying I am not of course I'm not Van Dijk he's the best defender in the world right now for the manager said to me I have to talk more to try and organize the team sometimes I have to get the second balls and be ready to press in this role I must try to do my best when I knew Virgil Vidal out for a long time 
I was shocked because first of all, he's the best defender in the world right now and most of all, he's a leader in the team and in the dressing room. He also makes sure the mood is good, a good atmosphere and we will miss this. But I have got to do a little of what Virgil always does. I must try to organize the team, to talk to the team and try to be a leader. Tactically at centre-back, I, I have to always be ready for the long balls. I will do my best. It was very important for me and the team to keep a clean sheet at Ajax and it's really good and really promising to see that Jurgen Klopp has urged Fabinho to be more talkative and to be a leader from the back because I think he has it in him. John Aldridge, another former Liverpool player and Liverpool legend said that it's a bit unfortunate now that we let Dejan Lovren go because even though you always felt he had the odd mistake in him he would have been very useful to have as backup but we haven't signed a backup and we'll have to make the best of this situation. We've got Fabinho who can drop in and even John, Jordan Henderson at the push if he, if, if he must, he can play centre-back. But the thing with Van Dijk is he makes everyone alongside him look a better player. All over the field we've got some top top players but if there was one player out of them all who wouldn't want to be without for any length of time, it's the big man Van Dijk. He has played virtually every minute of every game since he arrived and he's irreplaceable. It's a big problem for Liverpool, there's no sugar coating it. What we have got to do between now and January 1st is make sure we score more than whoever we are playing, which we can do with our firepower and then even though it won't be easy for you gang to find the right player, go into the transfer market to buy a defender. Koulibaly from Napoli would be the one for me, although he doesn't really tick a lot of the boxes in terms of age and what he would cost, but I really think the club is going to have to try and do something given how long Virgil's likely to be out for. And the fact we only had three senior centre-halves to start with because they Liverpool took a gamble on not buying a replacement for Lovren and I think that was a risk, a calculated list by Jurgen Klopp and now it will be very interesting how Liverpool will cope with Van Dijk's uh, loss or absence because yes we have a lot of young players who can do a job but are they ready for the Premier League that's a big question and if Matip will be out for a long time then Gomez and Fabinho will virtually have to play every game in the Premier League and in the Champions League and that's a big ask given Gomez is also injury prone what if Gomez is also get injured? Then we might have to play Reese Williams or Netanyahu Phillips. I think I think Netanyahu Phillips is the most likely player to come in long term to to the Premier League if uh, just Fabinho is only available because he played uh, in the Bundes second Bundesliga. But of course, Jurgen Klopp watches these guys in training, so he will know more than most other people who to bring in if we if we really need to play a young center back and there is a 19 year old a rising star coming from the USA called Brandon Aronson and he is actually going to uh, RB Salzburg in January so he definitely is a key player that we need to keep an eye on because he has revealed that he is a huge level Liverpool fan and he idolized Steven Gerrard and Fernando Torres growing up watching football. He said, my dad introduced me to the game of football at a young age as he played college football in America. He also put me in front of a TV and I watched Liverpool ever since. As long as I can remember, I've been a Liverpool fan. I hate, I have Steven Gerrard and Fernando Torres posters in my room. Those two were the ones I looked up to. I have Liverpool winning the Champions League above my bed too. When they won the title last year, that was a crazy moment for me. Going back to the Gerrard slip it was tough but to see them absolutely dominate the Premier League it was insane I was I was so happy on the inside I think the Premier League is the dream league for me it is unbelievable and it, I keep, it keep uh, going uh, keeps going upwards the players keep getting better and better and for me it is for sure a dream league and something I would like to be a part of for any team over there really I think we are a little different in positioning to Kai, he has been confirmed, compared to Kai Havertz but I used to see him going to the games and giving it his all every game. I think I'm an energetic centre midfielder that loves to go forward, score goals, get assists, I'm creative when I get to the final third and I like to make stuff happen when I get the, the ball. So I think he is definitely a player to keep an eye on because if he fulfills his potential then 
we would love to see him at Liverpool when we, we love to see players who love Liverpool passionately in their heart. And Adrian said some interesting things after the Ajax win. He said it's a big win, a massive one, three points in the Champions League and the clean sheet. It was a little bit different, strange. We missed some good players in defense. I think we deserved another result in the derby, but I think we reacted really well. The team showed the strong mentality that we have, the winning, uh, winning mentality. As a goalkeeper, keeping a clean sheet is a massive thing and the last few games we conceded many goals, some cheap goals. It was good keeping a clean sheet, scoring one goal to get us the three points. Fabinho played a few times uh, at centre-back last season. The more games playing together, everyone is going to get more confident for sure. We have known each other for a long time and it's not just the centre-backs and the goalkeeper, it's the whole team defending and it was a very good job from everyone. Obviously we know we are going to miss Virgil and it's a big loss for us, but it's how to react. We have many good players who can play in this position. Fabinho did great with Joe Gomez, we have a great squad we have shown at different times last season. When anyone is not playing, another one comes from the bench to do the same and even better. We are going to miss Virgil for sure, but I thought we did good from the defending side. So that's a good confident interview by Adrian. I really hope that he can keep performing at a good level until Alisson is back. But Alisson could be back for the weekend for the Sheffield game, Sheffield United game, so that will be interesting to see. Thanks for watching guys, I really hope that you enjoy this. Have a nice day, see you later, goodbye!